am honored to be here, and I want to first thank Sherry Leedy for giving me the opportunity to show it in such a wonderful place. I hope that you will keep coming back to see all of the shows that they uh, exhibit. Um, they have, as you know, a fabulous um, the quality and the, and the development of what they do for shows, and uh, this is a place to see, so please keep coming back to see uh, all they do. I'm so excited about seeing uh, you, and everybody just looks like an eight-year version of when I saw you last day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was really cool, uh, and you're on the on honor. So I've been wanting, I've been drawing since I was about 15, but I've, and so I, my, I've been wanting to do this for since I was 10 or 15. So at some point in your life, you decide, you know, well, if you've been wanting to do this for this long, you might as well. And so, as you know, I moved from Kansas City to Washington, D.C., and uh, was with the National Endowment for the Arts for my four-year term, and it was uh, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, people love Kansas City. Truly, I traveled to all 50 states and four or five countries and met about 85 heads of other arts organizations. But as I took them, I would also whip out my... Um, off my smartphone and I would take hundreds of my own personal pictures and uh, I would draw on planes and in airports and things and I would give those sketches to actually members of Congress and uh, oh, look we funded this senior <laughs> and you have to do it with everybody when you do that because you're not trying to play partiality you're just trying to show that and so what's better than the art so this is what's going through my head so I was able to um, draw and that was super fun but it just caught my juices going again. So after I left the National Endowment for the Arts, finished my term, um, I started getting really serious about, well, I understand the basics. I have an associate degree in art and learned everything from color theory to you know, drawing contours and everything. And why not get revved up again because you love it so much. So this was done during my pandemic period. Uh, you know, Picasso does the blue period, the rose period, and I have the pandemic period. Uh, just ways to uh, remember how to do this and how to draw. So that was why, and um, uh, there's something from every state. So I've been to everything and had uh, personal experience with every image that you see, and that's how I started. Um, I continue to draw. Uh, as you know, all artists, and you are arts, artists too, you branch out and you start, well, now that I've done this, I think I'll do that. And so uh, there'll be more to be continues. But uh, this is uh, um, just something from every state, and there's a few countries too. And then there's one more piece, and that is um, there's a few drawings uh, that are um, pen and ink. Everything is ink, uh, India ink on Bristol, but there are a few that have a pop of color, uh, and they're like objects juxtaposed on top of. So everything is drawn. Those are drawn with color pencil, maybe a few marking pens and things. Uh, but I draw those intentionally because uh, there's something about um, me that I, that I feel like is a juxtaposition. So I was born in Oklahoma and I grew up in Arkansas and uh, my parents are from China, so I've got this bok choy corn dog thing going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, uh, being in these situations where you've got uh, two opposing perspectives or multiple perspectives, uh, you learn how to uh, not have to give up either one, how to uh, live in ambiguity and figure out how to be. And so that those drawings are representations of uh, who I always feel like I am, which is uh, one drawing on top of another in several different dimensions. And maybe we all feel that on uh, all kinds of occasions, but there's something more philosophical and deeper than just drawing stuff for fun, which it's all fun. So I hope to set some context for you about uh, why we're doing this. And again, most appreciative, I look around and see many of you that I've learned from in all kinds of things, especially leadership characteristics, people I've got to work with, things that you've taught me. Um, you're all on my personal board of directors in a lot of ways. So uh, thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for all you've done for me, uh, even just by, by your actions of life. Uh, and thank you for what you're doing in the Kansas City area and beyond. So uh, that, that could be four or five more hours that I could literally do. <laughs> <laughs> so I would open it up to you to answer, ask any questions that you have um, that will help me understand uh, what you might like to know. Yes, Jennifer. Jean, what is your studio like? 
My studio is my living room, and so uh, I live in an apartment in Manhattan, and so it's, uh, I just set it up to look probably more like a studio. So I draw all the time. I probably draw about 12 to 14 hours a day, and um, it's a lot of fun. And so I never, you know, it's one of those, and you can, everybody has them, situations where you, you look up and realize it's been the whole day because time has stopped. And so I dream of that for any of us to have those moments where time stands still so much because you are so, uh, you don't have to uh, say, I've got to do this. And we all have to do these things we have to do. But I dream of those moments for all of us where we can, where time doesn't become an element and that we are immersed in whatever we uh, feel like is coming out of us emanating. So uh, I draw in my own living room slash studio. <laughs> In silence? In music? I usually listen to podcasts because it's hard to, you can't read when you're, you know. So, uh, and some drawings are so um, serious that I can't even listen because, you know, I'm using a part of my brain where I have to really think about uh, something. Or what happens, there's a couple of drawings in here I've had to draw three or four times before because, I, you know, I listen to something and I'd be like, I just ruined the, you know. So, uh, so uh, there are times where uh, I know what I'm doing and I'm uh, either inking and so on. Uh, I get to use the side of the brain which I can ink and at the same time listen to documentaries and podcasts and things like that. And that keeps me more informed. So that's how I do it every day. So that was a question. Yeah. Do you do things in pencil first? And ink? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm uh, very... Uh, I'm really organized, and I draw uh, pencil uh, drawings in all kinds of sketches that are very loose, and they just get tighter and tighter and tighter. And uh, uh, the inking is the last thing I do. So I plan it all out, even the ones with the pops of color on it. I'll uh, draw everything out and look where, where should I put the object, and then I'll leave a space for that object, and I'll usually draw the ink card, and then I'll start putting in colors, so I have to practice that. And, but that's usually my um, uh, process. And I think the longest drawings have taken about 55 hours that I've had to figure out how to do it. Uh, getting a little faster, but I can't go so fast that I lose the quality that I want to have. So and you're still it. learning. Different scales. You've got some of the intimate close-up things, and then yes, more. You know, I tend to. Things. That's right. I tend to love uh, lettering. I find lettering since I was 15, and I used to do all my friends' campaign posters when they were in high school. And there's something in there. And then I had an art school uh, uh, teacher in high school who taught me how to do linear perspectives, and I was hooked. So there's something about. I don't draw buildings all the time, but there's something about it that is so fun. And um, anyway, so that's how it kind of emanated. But I, you're right, I like to like go in on a close-up as opposed to saying uh, the whole building with surroundings. Uh, you can see everything. I, I'd rather do like one brick for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, that was going to be my yeah. question. You talked about, you know, do buildings all the time. And this is a really beautiful uh, portfolio of great architecture. And we were going around the room, as I said to you, playing a game, like, can we figure out where this place is? And we were wrong most of the time. But um, I was going to ask, what else do you uh, focus on when you're doing your drawings? Other than buildings, because I love buildings, I love architecture. Um, it's, it's almost all buildings, but I'm working on another project also, which is uh, the Objects of Immigrants to America. And so I've had the opportunity to meet, uh, what my idea was, uh, meet people who have immigrated to the United States and uh, tell their story in a short story form, but start by saying, um, what, everybody has a keepsake object. You know, is there something special that we have that, and, and could I draw your object too while I'm telling your story? And uh, I won't take it from you. We'll have to figure out how to handle it. But um, uh, if you can do reference photos or I can see it a couple of times, uh, maybe we can. So I'm doing these short stories of people from five continents. Everything but our Antarctica. I don't know who lives in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> immigrated from Antarctica. But, uh, I'm doing those, and the Smithsonian has published some of them in there. Uh, folk Life magazine, a lot of the drawings. So those are fun projects to work on. I probably have about 50 drawings by the time I've done that. So uh, I'm a 
professional 1099er now. <laughs> and, uh, uh, find as many ways I can to draw and uh, love it. It's like wow. picking, stuff, picking stuff that you like to do yeah. and then just try to, try to find as many ways that you can do it because you so love it. So, thank you. Hi, Mark. When do you find time to play the piano? I haven't played the piano in 20 years. The last time I played the piano was uh, actually probably before I went to the Kaufman Center. But where I loved uh, it is uh, when we uh, I went with Julia to pick the pianos for uh, Ellsberg Hall and uh, the Muriel Kaufman Theater. And uh, we went to the Steinway place. And uh, I knew immediately, because there's all kinds of pianos and they, they can play, you know, very bright sounds like Billy Joel, or you can play muted sounds and uh, I, I knew immediately that's where it helped to play the piano. It's like, oh, it's that piano, not this piano. Because <laughs> if this piano comes out, nobody's going to ever hear it, or that piano, if we pick that one, it's going to be uh, so bright, you know, the orchestra's not even going to be heard. <laughs> so um, that's where I uh, know my knowledge of piano. I haven't played in decades. I could not pick it up. That's a loss. You lose your muscle memory when you haven't played that long. Jane? Yes. Uh, what I understand that once. What is ma'am? Nancy. I'm so happy. Okay. Once you lay a stroke on paper, is that final? Yes. So um, there's no erasure, there's no way to undo anything. I haven't been. I don't want to use white out. <laughs> because, because these are original drawings. I mean, sometimes people will do ink and they'll put white out on it. I guess if you're reproducing or something, nobody can tell. I'd probably do it then. But no, the white that's coming through is the paper. So I don't use white. I just use black ink and try to figure out if I want something darker. I When I was in art school, I learned to uh, the classical painting of oil painting and glazing and, you know, one on top of the other. And so I, even though this is just one color, I mean, it's not one or one value, it's, uh, I, I draw the same way I paint, the way to paint oils. It's just one layer of ink, and then I go back and put another layer of ink, and then another one, sometimes it's four and five layers, and you think, well, why would you do that when it's just ink? It's just one, you know, one hue. But uh, the truth is, I felt like I tried to do that to get more depth. Uh, so there is something about layering. So Mission I accomplished. Well, I know why, yes. <laughs> and yes, you Which part of your process challenges you the most? Because that's a, a great question because I, I have, I'm so happy that uh, that's like saying, what's like, but it's, I'm so happy. It's just hard to say the part challenges me the most. I think probably I've learned to uh, try to catch mistakes before I, uh, you know, before I keep working on something, then I back off and look at it, for, like if I'm looking at it with a third eye, and then I realize it was awful. And so now I try to go back and forth a little bit more, and I try to catch it earlier. And I still have to start completely over. But uh, that's, I've, I've learned how to look at it faster. So you don't keep a back room for seconds then? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there is. Uh, there are a couple of drawings here uh, that 
there was one uh, huge pole in the middle of some wording on one of these, and I just drew it out and uh, hoped that the wording really looked like that. <laughs> yes, yes, I will edit out things that, you know, it's like, why, why is this telephone going? <laughs> but I'm not trying to make it look, you know, portrait or anything like that. I like it to look real, but I don't usually draw trash and things like that. Some people do. Yeah. yeah. How do you decide which location and the perspective for each state? That's a great question. How do I decide? Well, uh, in every single case, I went there. And so, in some cases, if I had gone on my own, like on vacation or something, I might not have drawn that building. But because I had visited that building or I saw it, uh, I, in some cases, that decision was made for me because we were traveling to see situations. But I don't like to draw the whole building, and so I usually take bucket loads of images of the building, and then I'll start looking and putting things together. Uh, so uh, there's still more decisions to be made after you take a picture. You don't draw. I don't draw it just like the picture without looking at the whole context. So I could not just draw a picture from somebody's picture. I felt like I had to see it. Uh, and look at it so many different. That's how I do it anyway. Any other questions? That's great. Um, oh, yeah. Have you ever thought about um, making reproductions of the originals to sell as well, or is there something about just having one that you like? Uh, probably yes to both answers, but I haven't done any uh, reproductions of anything here. Uh, maybe sometime, but right now it's just, uh, uh, these are all just the original. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for being <laughs>